Hey, welcome back, guys. Robert Anton from Paintings by Night. And uh, as you can see, I have a new addition to the family. Uh, this little guy right here, um, I named him Stanley. He's, uh, I adopted him out uh, about two weeks ago. So uh, Stanley and Sawyer are pretty good friends for the most part um, until Sawyer gets over it like he is right now. So, yeah. Anyway, guys, uh, again, Ryan Heron here, and tonight I want to show you how to paint another um, quick demo. It's a 5 by 7 inch uh, landscape of a winter scene. My dad had taken a photograph of the area, the place, the town that I grew up in, and um, it was a couple of years back when it actually snowed on Christmas here in East Tennessee for the first time since I can remember. Um, so I decided to use that um, and, and kind of loosely base that, that idea from that photograph. So uh, we'll go ahead and uh, get these guys some food and, and get me some coffee and I'll see you in the studio. Okay, welcome back guys. I'm here in the studio and see like I mentioned earlier I'm working on a, a small five by seven inch um, it's actually a smooth panel um, it came pre gessoed so I didn't add that extra layer of texture like I normally do but here for uh, for the sky color and the foreground shadows I'm just kind of scrubbing out my brush on the bottom part just to add some tone some color to the canvas um, there's very very little color it's uh, it's mostly white. It's got a little bit of blue and yellow towards the horizon. And here I've just taken some alizarin crimson and white um, and a little bit of yellow right above it to make that, that bright um, sunrise. And right here I'm using a natural, uh, just a small natural hair uh, bristle brush. And I'm just kind of blocking in the, the cloud formations and the color I used for this was a mix of mostly French ultramarine blue and crimson with a little bit of white to it. Now, if, if you notice like towards the top part of each cloud formation, that's, that's the area I'm most concerned with because that light from the horizon is gonna be emitted to the base of those clouds and make it appear kind of, kind of foggy and, and misty. Um, so again, I, I try to try to be as loose as I can with it. Um, it's kind of weird. Skies are probably my one of my favorite things to paint, and I found that when I'm really not trying so hard, I tend to do better. Um, I just kind of let the brush bounce around, um, and yeah, just not 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 try so hard, and and things come out to look more natural. And as I said a second ago, the very base of those clouds, I'm trying to blend out just a little bit um, where that sun's going to be reflecting on mostly. And here I'm adding a little more crimson to that blue and white mixture, uh, just to where the red will be um, kind of reflecting off the bottom of those clouds. So yeah, that's, that's about it for the sky. Um, I don't know, I keep changing my mind. I'm like, yeah, I need another cloud there. I need one, but, you know, I could literally spend hours, you know, just on the sky. But um, it's like anything else, there has to be a point where you uh, you keep moving and and try not to nitpick so much at it. And in fact, about it, not, not only with the sky, but with pretty much anything that I paint, I found, um, the faster I paint and the looser I paint, the better the outcomes. Now, that could be different for different people, um, but for me, it's almost like a thing of, it's like, oh man, I've spent way too much time on this one cloud and it's it's ruined, uh, typically. So, uh, I use my fingers a lot, as most of you already know, um, and I'm just kind of blending the, 
the pink area right above where that distant mountain range is going to be. And here I'm making the, the most distant mountain range. And the colors um, used for that are again uh, ultramarine blue, crimson, and and again mostly white. It's a, it's a very, very distant mountain range. Um, and that is a pretty accurate um, representation of what the reference photo had in it of the mountains that I could see from, from where I, I used to live at my parents' house. Um, you know, it was always so beautiful, sunrise and sunset, and uh, I get a lot, I've seen a lot of those. Um, I forget, I forget the, the kind of cloud that you, you call them, but the, uh, like the vertical type clouds, the streaky clouds. So I, I paint a lot of those, and I think that's because, you know, growing up, and, and even to this day where I live in Tennessee, I see a lot of, a lot of skies like that. Um, here again, after, after making the top edge of that distant mountain, I'm just kind of scrubbing, scrubbing that extra color out in the foreground where the, where the land is going to be. Um, there was a little bit of snow in the, uh, the reference photo, but I wanted to, to add a little more snow and shadow to, uh, to this painting. And here I'm just, I'm using that same color I used for the distant mountains, only I've darkened it um, by using just um, quite a bit more blue. Uh, there's still a little bit of crimson in there to give it like a purple cast. And I'm trying to, again, I'm doing my best to pay attention just to the very top, top edge of that mountain range. And um, after I get the, um, get the the outline or, or the basic shape of the range. That's when I go back down and start to <clears throat> use the flat side of my brush to block in the color. Um, so I'm actually doing that right now. I'm starting to make it a little bit bigger. And of course, I know I keep beating this in the ground, but as anything in nature or wherever, as anything gets closer to us, it becomes darker. So that's what you kind of have to keep in mind on a, especially when painting, you know, landscapes. Um, everything in the foreground is going to be much, much darker than, than in the distance. So here, it's like I'm scrubbing in basically pure blue with a little bit of crimson mixed in with it. And I really don't have any idea <laughs> at this point how the land is, uh, is going to flow or where the snow is going to be or anything. And here I'm doing, um, I guess you would call this the, the wipe away method. I'm just using my pinky. Uh, make sure there's no paint on your pinky first. But uh, I'm just using my finger just to, to kind of smudge it in and uh, even kind of dab in my, my finger in some, some white and some, some crimson to make some misty, misty looking areas towards, towards the base of that, that larger mountain. And with a, a clean, soft brush, I'm just kind of blending out my um, finger marks uh, to make it real, real misty. And and again, that that definitely helps give an illusion of of distance in your in your paintings. Um, here I am. Base. What was I doing? Oh, okay. Yeah. Here, <laughs> it's making some uh, some shrubs. Uh, some bushes and dead trees and things like that that uh, you know you often see popping up out of out of snow snow scenes um, the mixture of this is burnt umber and a little bit of crimson I think mixed with that yeah there is crimson so crimson and burnt umber it, and the the crimson just gives it a little more of a reddish hue and that's what I want a lot of these shrubs to to have is like a, almost like a red kind of cast to them, a reddish brown color. So yeah, I'm just using that same, I'm pretty sure it's the same cloud brush and I'm just kind of popping up these little um, shrubs or, or grass areas that you see in just random places. Um, 
And I'm trying to, when I, when I mix the, the burr number and the crimson, I try not to over mix it. Um, so you get these variations in color. Like if you'll see, if you'll notice more towards the center, uh, there's more of a reddish hue than, than the sides, which is exactly what I want. I want your eye to be brought right into the center of that painting or the main focal point, which is right about where I'm rubbing my fingers right here. So the reason for this is to kind of um, uh, make the, the bottom of the shrubs to, to, to appear misty. And also when I start to blend those in with the snow, um, it's gonna pick up some of that color and look like shadows. Now here I've gotten a, uh, a really, really fine brush. It's a script liner brush and I've thinned out the paint with linseed oil. So it'll, it'll glide right over the rest of that paint. And normally on a, a landscape painting this size, I, I try not to put a lot of detail into it. Um, but since, since I was working on a, a very smooth surface um, and going by the reference photo, I spent a little more time adding, you know, individual branches and uh, sticks and leaves and, and things things like that but typically i would just kind of give the illusion of, of a, a tree or a mountain or grass or whatever but but like i said i had a little more time for this one and um uh, and wanted to make it look pretty close to that reference photo that my daddy gives me and um again with this make sure it's make sure the paint's pretty thin um almost like a, like an ink cons consistency. And that way you can uh, sharpen it out to a really fine edge and make some of those, those distant branches that you see. And uh, you'll see me looking at the photo several times, trying to get it right. But like my uncle Glenn says, I don't think we'll ever get it right. <laughs> That's why we uh, <clears throat> keep, keep practicing and, and keep trying. And over here, I'm doing the same thing, just making a few more detailed uh, dead trees that I saw in the photograph. And I would like to put some uh, some leaves or, or a few dead looking leaves or whatever that are still on these, these trees. Um, but for right now, I'm just using the, the liner brush and making the very small twigs. And, sticks that you see and again getting darker towards the base as it comes closer to us and I'm actually making these trees a little bit longer uh, in length than, than what I would normally do because some of the the brown that you see uh, will actually be shadow for, for those trees uh, towards the base of the trunk and here I've got my one of my favorite palette knives. Um, putting a, um, another layer of a thicker color, a darker color at the base of some of those shrubs. And just kind of letting the knife do the work. Um, let it bounce around and hit, hit a few of those areas where, where the sun is not gonna um, be as strong. Uh, in other words, in the shadows, you're gonna want them a lot darker. So you could use a brush for this. I just uh, sometimes prefer to, to, to use a knife. Um, you can get the paint on there thick and kind of block it in and then you can manipulate it with your, your brush or your fingers. And yeah, here's what I was talking about. I wanted to put a few uh, dead leaves, uh, you know, still on those trees. So, <clears throat> I think it gives it a little more interest and I always think it's cool when you can see the, the light like coming through the, the leaves. So that's why I decided to add a few, which are actually not, there wasn't so many in the reference photo. Um, I added a few more just, uh, just got, got kind of carried away with the, the brush, I guess. I don't know, but, um, but yeah, again, it's, it's a lot lighter. You wouldn't want to use a knife to make those uh, distant 
leaves and branches because it would be too dark. So that's why I keep going back to the uh, to the brush I used in the beginning, um, just to give a really soft soft illusion of uh, some some detailed leaves and some of that light showing through those tree branches. That's what really really sets it off. But yeah, there's uh, there's so many places like this that, that I've seen, um, you know, having lived in East Tennessee my whole life near near the Smoky Mountains, um, the Blue Ridge Parkway, and uh, luckily, you know, a lot of these sunrises and sunsets, even where I live now, um, uh, gosh, I get some of the most beautiful sunrises on, on my, my back deck. Uh, once the sun comes over the mountains and over the river, it's so beautiful. So I'm uh, very fortunate to, to have an area uh, with a view like this. But, uh, and, and growing up too, you know, my whole life, I think um, a lot of times we, we take things for granted. Uh, no matter where we live or who we're with, um, you know, they, as the old saying is, you know, it's, there's nothing that, that doesn't get old after a while. But there are times where, you know, I go outside and I'll watch the sunrise or sunset and, um, yeah, just really thank God that I've been blessed to, uh, uh, to, you know, to be living in an area like this and uh, with such natural beauty and, and it's all around. Um, and that's just within East Tennessee, you know, let alone the entire country or the world. But, um, but yeah, this, um, like I said, I, I guess I paint a lot of scenes. To me, they, they seem pretty similar to this. But for the main reason, I think it's because, you know, like I said, I was, I was brought up here and um, I played outside a lot as a kid, went hiking. Um, so I, you know, I've seen places like this my entire life. And here after what I'm doing with this small brush, after I went in to add the leaves, um, I wanted to darken a few more of those um, tree trunks and the, the sticks that come out of the top, I wanted to darken that. Um, here with my palette knife, I'm adding uh, a little bit of snow in the foreground. And uh, I never, a, a rule of thumb of, of mine, probably for most artists, I never start off with pure white. Like even if it's snow or whatever, I never just dip my brush or knife into pure titanium white, you know, there's, because when you really look at snow out in nature, there's a lot of, um, especially in the shadow areas, there's a lot of like purple and blue color. So uh, if you start off with, with the brightest of brights, like pure white for the snow, um, it's, it's going to make it um, difficult if you want to add those shadows later. So it's always best to start off dark, um, or I found to start off with the darks and work your way to the to the brightest areas. And what I I just did right there with the Q-tip um, was I, I actually have a, a small jar of Q-tips like right next to my paint brushes, and I use those um, kind of like I do with my my fingers sometimes to wipe away paint. And some of those transparent colors, like crimson, that I was telling you about, that's mixed with the brown and the shrubs. If I take my finger or my Q-tip and just kind of gently scrub away some of those areas, then it's almost like it illuminates, like those, uh, those transparent colors show through with the white of the board. So rather than adding layer after layer after layer of paint, I can just simply remove it um, kind of blend it out with the larger brush later and give it that really, really misty a, a appearance. And like right there in the, right there in the middle, I added a really bright area where I thought the sun would be hitting on some of that mist leading up to the foreground. So yeah, and I just continue to wipe away and, uh, there you go, instant sunlight. 
So, but again, like anything else, you don't want to get too carried away with it. Sometimes, uh, the less you do of something, the better it looks, if that makes sense. Uh, if you just have one or two really, really bright areas in your painting, rather than, you know, the whole thing being, being super bright. Um, and yeah, after using the, the Q-tip or my finger, I get like a clean, uh, any kind of soft, a synthetic or natural hairbrush and just kind of blend out fingerprints and, and smudge marks and make it look more misty. And uh, as you can see, the, the snow and the shadow areas, um, again, it wasn't, it was not at all pure white. It was mainly, mainly blue crimson with a little bit of white. And now, as I go along, I can, I can add more, um, more areas where I think the sun is going to really hit on that snow and make it bright. Um, but again, since it's sort of in the shadows under all these like big trees on the side and the shrubs, I still don't want to use pure white. So I've, I've got it mixed with um, still some, some blue and crimson. Um, and I purposely let my knife kind of kind of skim over some of those dark areas. And that just looks like some of the, the ground is showing through or some of the grasses. And here, with like that purple shadow snow color mix, I'm using the knife to uh, try to get it right next to the trees and under the trees. And as I mentioned earlier, that makes it look like, uh, like shadows given off from the trees. And uh, I'll slowly start to uh, finish up on some of the, there we go, some of the purple snow color here at the very edge. But yeah, I've, uh, I really enjoyed doing, uh, doing this painting. Um, I think I spent way too much time on it for it to be such a small painting, but but uh, as always, I, I enjoy sharing this with, with you all, and I hope that, that it gives you some, uh, uh, some inspiration and, and, and the, the desire to pick up your brushes and, and go at it. Because um, like I said, there's, uh, there's times where I, I'm not in the mood at all to paint, but like anything else, I, I think that if we if we do things, even though I do, you know, obviously I enjoy painting. Um, if we do things sometimes, even when we're not in the mood, that is what develops habit. And that's how we become better. Um, so, you know, I try to, uh, I try to do something at least once a day, even if I can't do a painting, um, you know, dealing with art, whether it's a video that I watch to learn from or a book I read um, and I, I take frequent breaks too especially on the ones that are uh, really detailed and kind of tedious I have to uh, yeah, set set timers to remind myself to take a break uh, get up and stretch and take the dogs for a walk get some fresh air um, that's and then when I come back to it you know, after taking like a walk for 20 or 30 minutes. But I come back to it and look at the painting, sometimes I'll notice things that I completely 100% overlooked as I was painting it. And it's kind of odd how that works. It's like it gives your brain, a, um, you know, some time to, to, to not stare at the same thing for so long. And then when you come back, you're like, oh wow, that's way too dark, or that's way too bright. And then, um, so it's really helpful, at least for me, to, to take frequent breaks. Um, I tend, out of every question I've ever been asked, probably the most, the number one question is, is Ryan, how long does it take you to paint a painting like that? Well, that <laughs> it's a little bit difficult to, uh, to answer, I guess it depends on a lot of things. My mood, um, 
if I'm even in the mood to paint. Um, just a lot of things, but I uh, hope you all enjoyed this video, and uh, if you did, be sure to subscribe, click that thumbs up button for me, and I'd really appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing you guys again soon. God bless.